The first of those that I want to look at here is Hogwarts Legacy, which outputs at a higher resolution than 1080p. Compared with PC at matched internal resolutions, the image quality of static areas of the screen has a similar visual output to DLS on PC targeting 1440p. 1440p output with PC level DLSS would be extraordinary given how PC DLSS should in theory cost quite a lot on this type of hardware in the Switch 2. So let us examine a bit closer here to see how it is being done. Looking at the model presets in comparison to PC, we get a sense of it. There is not a specific preset actually that lines up with the visual output as we see on Switch 2 at similar internal resolutions. In terms of image clarity, sharpness, and apparent detail, the Switch 2 DLSS lands somewhere between preset E, which is the CNN model, and preset K, which is the transformer model. Switch 2 is a touch sharper than preset E on PC, and unlike Cyberpunk, it does not appear to be a result of post sharpening. If we look at the sharpening the game provides, that provides a very different and noisier resolve even in static shots than what we see happening in Switch 2. And if we look at cutscene frame cuts on Switch 2, we can see that Switch 2 does not have an extra contrast or halo ringing effect like we would see if sharpening was being applied here. So whatever version of DLSS 2 Switch 2 is running here, it has a different resolve than found in all the PC models. Let us return to that cutscene frame cut here to investigate further. On PC, with that DLSS, no matter which version you are using, frame cuts always resolve with DLSS attempting anti-aliasing and some form of reconstruction to a higher resolution. So if you pause a frame there, you will always see that DLSS will try and temporally upscale the frame or anti-alias it even on a camera cut, even though it has no frames to temporarily upscale from because the previous frames are from an entirely different scene. On such moments, DLSS on PC produces results like these that are far from perfectly clear, but they are not aliased. Only the largest edge aliasing that DLSS cannot perfectly anti-alias in such circumstances will get this wobbly wavy look as we can see right here. This is standard DLSS behavior as we've seen on PC, and we can see it happening in games like Cyberpunk 2077 and in Street Fighter 6 on Switch 2 when the camera cuts. In Hogwarts Legacy, this is just not the case. On Switch 2, frame cuts look like this, very different than PC DLSS. The Switch 2 side here is very aliased, where the internal resolution now shines through. It's easy to see that there are stair steps on all edges, and the edges we see look untreated, almost raw, almost like nearest neighbor upscaled pixels, which is very different to PC DLSS in the CNN or, of course, the Transformer model. This aliasing behavior does not only happen on camera cuts, it also happens with object or camera movement. Take for example this shot in the menu here, an animation is playing with books flying around. And on Switch 2, all these books are fully aliased. That means they have easy to view stair steps on the edges. And they also appear much lower resolution than the rest of the static scene, such as the things behind the books. On the PC CNN model, we can see that it attempts reconstruction and anti-aliasing with faults, of course, on those moving books. It gives it at least rounder anti-aliased edges and attempts to make a higher resolution in those page details. It's of course not perfect given the speed of the objects, but it does at least look more consistent with the rest of the image in spite of some artifacts like wavy edges. On the Switch 2, moving objects just kind of look lower res and flickery on their edges as soon as any side of movement kind of starts. This applies to any and all moving objects in all scenes in the Switch 2 version. So in comparison to PC DLSS and the CNN model here, it looks like Switch 2's anti-aliasing and image reconstruction does not work on moving objects. In terms of subjective appearance, I would say that this type of DLSS on Switch 2 does not look like the DLSS as found on PC as it has different behaviors in the areas where PC DLSS resolves just differently and honestly quite a lot better. Now Star Wars Outlaws is another title that evidences behavior like this, though with some minor differences. First let us talk about resolution output here though as I have an update on our launch coverage. Contrary to our original reporting, when we compare with PC we can see that the game is actually outputting at 1080p resolution and not 1440p as originally reported on. 
look at the clarity of the image on static objects. And if you see the pixel grid there, it lines up quite well with PC DLSS at 1080p output and not like 1440p, which is noticeably more detailed in all aspects. So this output doesn't look like 1440p, like Hogwarts Legacy is. When we compare to PC DLSS presets like we did with Hogwarts, we can see that the image there on Star Wars Outlaws on Switch 2 is somewhere between E and K presets for sharpness, even though no post-process sharpening is occurring if we examine camera cuts. There's no haloing behavior or local contrast enhancement evident. If we return to that preset comparison though, we can see some very key behavior. In motion, even though the image is mostly static, there is some slight movement in the camera occasionally, which causes aliasing to show through. And that is not at all visible in any of the PC versions of DLSS. This is like the behavior we see in Hogwarts Legacy to a degree. For example, if you look at characters moving, you can see it in full, where the moving objects in scenes breaks DLSS reconstruction and anti-aliasing, and the internal resolution shows through. Compared to the PC DLSS at similar internal resolutions, the DLSS in the Switch 2 version of Star Wars Outlaws does not anti-alias moving objects, nor does it up-res them to higher resolutions. It only does that for static objects. The one difference with Hogwarts Legacy is that objects after camera cuts in this game tend to actually have a bit of image quality treatment applied to them. As we can see here, edges on camera cuts are not perfect stair-step aliases. Although they are quite aliased, they're slightly softened with a slight waviness to them, more similar to PC DLSS, although PC DLSS actually anti-aliases here. It's hard to say why this is happening here, but it is a contrast to Hogwarts Legacy where it is more raw on camera cuts. Now, based on the titles examined so far, we see two distinct types of DLSS resolve becoming apparent. We have the first type of DLSS in Cyberpunk 2077 or Street Fighter VI, which have hallmark characteristics like found in DLSS on PC, specifically the CNN model. Then we have a second type with like Hogwarts Legacy or Star Wars Outlaws that do not have the characteristics of PC DLSS. It is important to note here that Hogwarts Legacy is also reconstructing up to 1440p output, which in theory should be quite expensive if Switch 2 was using PC's CNN DLSS type. With these two types of behavior in mind, let's look at The Tourist, a game which uses DLSS to output at 4K resolution, according to the developers. Now loading up the game, I think it's easy to place it in the two types of DLSS we have seen so far. Like in Hogwarts Legacy or Star Wars Outlaws, objects at rest have a similar look to the output resolution. So, those things that are not moving here look largely like 4K edges in appearance, but moving objects break reconstruction and anti-aliasing resolve. Just look at the objects bobbing up and down in the water here. They show that off well. Compare the bobbing hat on the character here to the way the docks look behind them. That static dock geometry looks a lot higher res than the moving character. You can also see this quite well when you turn the character or move the camera. The internal resolution structure reveals itself. If we can pause, we can also see that the internal resolution here has an unprocessed look, unlike PC DLSS would have. It doesn't have any of those wavy edges. These edges are easy to count as a result, and the apparent internal resolution here is around 720p in The Tourist. The Tourist appears to be using a DLSS type to get to 4K that is similar to Star Wars Outlaws or Hogwarts Legacy. Now let us look at Fast Fusion, a game which also has 4K 60fps mode that uses DLSS. If an object or the camera is still, that area tends to resolve to a 4K pixel grid with anti-aliasing and a 4K level of detail. But as soon as an object moves or the camera moves, we can see a rawest, almost nearest neighbor like pixelated look that betrays the internal resolution. A good example of this can be seen with these electrical arcs on the boost pads. When they move over background scenery, the electrical arcs and the background scenery they've obscured lacks all anti-aliasing and reconstruction. If you juxtapose that with the reconstructed detail and resolution to the right of it, you can see big difference. You have a 4K looking railing right here and a 648p looking railing right here. Same with these spiky balls that roll throughout the level. The moving ball looks sub 720p versus the static background detail, which looks 4K-like. 
Based upon this behavior and such a big difference between moving and static objects, I would say like the tourist, this could be classified into the second type of DLSS that we see, like those found in Star Wars Outlaws or in Hogwarts Legacy. With these two examples reaching for such high resolution, it looks like the Switch 2 has two types of DLSS. A DLSS type that is most similar to the PC DLSS's CNN model, and another less effective variant. The second less effective variant can have higher levels of sharpness than that which we find in the PC CNN model, but on movement, it almost looks like it's turning off and not working. This type of DLSS is being used in titles like Hogwarts Legacy, The Tourist, Fast Fusion, etc., which upscale the resolutions above 1080p. Based upon those things that Rich calculated in 2023, those resolutions would be a great challenge to run PC CNN model on Switch 2's GPU. But something like a lower quality and cheaper DLSS variant, like we're seeing here, might explain how games like that get to such a high res. Wanting to confirm our visual findings of two different types of DLSS, we asked a respected developer behind the scenes who's familiar with the matter, and they came back to tell us this. DLSS on Switch 2 has two types, one that is much like the CNN presets on PC, and one that has presets that are roughly half the cost in terms of frame time than the CNN model. This cheaper model of DLSS is newer, and in their experience, it causes image quality to have characteristics that I described here. It suffers in movement, although it might be sharper in stills. Hearing directly from a developer to confirm our findings is interesting. Two types of DLSS, that normal PC type that we've known for ages that we see in Cyberpunk and another type like we see in The Tourist. With it being roughly half the cost of the traditional CNN DLSS, it also explains how titles like The Tourist or Fast Fusion can work at 60 FPS at 4K resolution. Rich calculated around 18 milliseconds including post-processing for 4K DLSS on a Switch 2 like GPU. But if it was half the cost, like around 9 milliseconds, that would give developers, you know, something like 7 or 8 milliseconds of processing time to use for the rest of the game. I think that's much more realistic to see then how games could reach 4K while using DLSS if it was a cheaper model. They could then fit all of the rest of the rendering in around those 7 or 8 milliseconds. That's still not a lot of time though when you think about it, but it does go a ways to explaining why games such as Fast Fusion or The Tourist run at such low resolutions, roughly 648p for the Fast Fusion game and 720p for The Tourist. So they're trying to squeeze all that remaining game processing into 8 milliseconds or so, and they have a limited GPU rendering budget. So something like a really low resolution to make that possible does make quite a bit of sense. Either way, I think it's really fascinating to see how this worked out. Rich's work in 2023 and his skepticism about DLSS actually bears out in the final product. At some point, Nintendo, NVIDIA, or some combination of the two firms developed a tinier DLSS model that ran in half the execution time as the CNN one on PC. Lower costs, but with lower quality on movement. And as of now, a great number of games at launch or in the time thereafter are using this tiny, lower quality DLSS to make their ambitions possible on Switch 2. Now, what do I think of this tiny DLSS? Well, I come from PC land, so I tend to have a skewed perspective based upon that. I can understand the reason for creating such a model with a low powered device like the Switch 2, especially for its handheld mode. But if I were a user and a developer, I would caution against its use in docked mode given its current visual results. It may be technically capable of reconstructing the resolutions above 1080p in docked mode on Switch 2, but the results honestly look rather poor, especially in movement here where it basically looks like it's often not functioning. If this were a review of a PC technique, I would say they need to go back and improve it for future versions, and I would disrecommend users from turning it on. At the moment, I would actually prefer if games went the Cyberpunk or Street Fighter route, with a lower output resolution and potentially a lower input resolution if need be, but with the potential for far more consistent image quality and actual working anti-aliasing on movement.